Hello, my name is Mark Boyer, and this is part two of uh, a series I call Coincidences. And this was on a personal level. And if anybody's been following uh, my story for any time at all, uh, it's self-evident that I firmly believe that I am a prophet of our end times. And uh, it's because uh, either I fulfill prophecy, okay? Uh, the first glaring one is in Galatians, okay? Galatians 3 there makes a reference to 430 years after the establishment of a duly recognized covenant, that human covenant that recognizes God as supreme, something will happen, okay? Now, my contention is, is uh, my abnormal birth landed in 1989, which was 430 years before um, the Act of Supremacy of 1559 that recognized God as supreme, which is a human covenant with God. Now, the reality is, is in Galatians 3, it says that the promise was spoken to Abraham and his seed. And by his seed, it does not mean everyone. It means another one that comes in the future. Um, and he's referred to as the son of man there. And uh, I fulfill the the gentle spirit's intent of that prophecy. My abnormal birth landed 430 years after the establishment of the duly recognized covenant of Galatians 3. Now, abnormal birth is also mentioned in 1 Corinthians 15. And that's where it says, God, you know, Jesus Christ will have visited, he visited, when he resurrected, he s went before his mother and the, pro the apostles, a group of 500 people, then he appeared before Paul, and the one with the abnormal birth. And uh, this happened on Remembrance Day 2004, uh, shortly after my chest plate was snapped in two inside the Archdiocese of Cathedral in Vancouver here. And uh, that was the beginning of uh, Daniel's eight, 2300 evenings and mornings since the declaration was made. And I filed my denial of consent to be governed. The following morning I died where Matthew 12 occurred. I was swallowed by the heart of the earth and I haven't been myself since. You know, my, uh, what can I say? Uh, I've lived a, a very astounding life where most of the time, I, after, after I've done something, I read the Bible and I see the consequences or what's happened. Uh, at the time I, of the making de the declaration, I had no idea this was happening. And uh, then, uh, about three years later, uh, I did, uh, I, I, as to a Daniel's prophecy, I uh, took a flight on a sky train from Vancouver to New West. Uh, this was in 2008 with, during the Obama election and we were running the election at the same time. And I filed in the city that bears my Lord's name, which is the Daniel's nine prophecy, okay? To uh, redeem all debt in the world. And at the time, uh, it, my damage award equaled the value as if the whole world were plated in gold. Now, at that time, it was blocked totally, criminally, by the Prince of Princes, okay? And, uh, there, he, it was totally unconstitutional, uh, so unconstitutional, so illegal, it was pathetic. I took flight 
and went to uh, the United States while the election writ was dropped to file a petition in the in the uh, United Nations to fulfill Isaiah 53. Okay, because what I was trying to push through Canadian courts at that time was the fulfilling of Isaiah 40, which is comfort to all God's children. And, uh, you know, what can I say? Now, the reality is, is last spring, it became aware to me a couple of weeks before. And I, I'm telling you, I, yeah, I, no more than a couple of weeks before the uh, Ash Wednesday, I became aware that the 2300 evenings and mornings of Daniel's prophecy was landing two weeks from now, you know, at the time. Okay? And at the time, and also, the 77s that were triggered when I uh, went to New West and uh, filed charges in New West and but went across there. The 77s prophecy of 77s and 62 sevens landed on the same day. Not just the same week, but the same day. Okay? And at that time, um, I filed a get well soon with a lot of people who have trampled on the messenger, which is a Hebrews 10, 28. And uh, that night, I surrendered to a warrant that had been sent out uh, by Calgary Police Department for my arrest because there is an interprovincial agreement uh, to arrest people on, and that you know, that put it this way, I had a warrant for my arrest that totally disappeared because in this get well card, I pointed out that that was the fulfilling of Revelations 2:10 because I was sentenced to an eight to ten day sentence in Calgary, where at the time I made it clear that this was the seventy weeks, the seventy the 77s in reverse, okay? All of these biblical, you know, I read the Bible, and when the crown gives me dates, uh, I make references, okay? Now, the reality is, is if you reduce 70 weeks, the, the Daniel 77s plus 62 sevens, you ended up on March 11th, and I was in a courtroom at that time where a judge found me guilty and sentenced me to an 8 to 11 day sentence, which was a fulfillment of Romans 11. Or Romans, uh, no, sorry, not Romans 11. Was the fulfillment of Revelations 2.10. And at the same time, the Gulf spill happened. Okay? You know, the big, the big uh, blow up and, you know, that, that was a man-made event. But at that time, so the calendar event happened then, okay? Now, uh, two weeks before then, uh, I entered, you know, I filed this, uh, I'm going a year later, now with the 2300 and evenings and mornings and the 77s from my direction coming in. And uh, I surrendered to a, a bullshit warrant and I was killed. Uh, inside the strip search room that night because I pissed off a cop, okay? Just with my mouth. Got you no, know, mind you, I was looking for trouble. But I had instigated nothing. They pressed no charges. And they snapped my neck right off my, you know, like six, six cops came down, snapped my neck clean. And I had one of these umbilical ex cord experiences where I'm looking down and they're looking down at my body going, get up, get up. And I zoom back in and I get up. They take me to the hospital where I need stitches. And no charges were pressed. The warrant disappeared. Nothing happened. I gave across my message that they were failing. A really bad test. And then I took flight to Ontario. Where, you know, uh, I did all the political activity that I could do for months on end and created all kinds of havoc and in the end two weeks before uh, 
you know, I uh, I was handed before before it happened, I was handed a golden opportunity while filing for my warehouse receipt uh, to uh, fulfill Daniel's twelve. Now the crown again handed me this date, and at no time did they know they were doing this. Okay, uh, maybe they did. I don't know, but. Bottom line is the coincidences are phenomenal of things that I've, you know, things that I've filed and things that I've done under ironclad publication ban and uh, through all of it, uh, I can honestly say uh, I am not Jesus Christ. He comes after me, shortly after me. I really am fulfilling the prophecy of the Jonah, you know, the one in Luke 11, the one in Luke 12, I've done. I was swallowed by the heart of the earth seven years ago. And in that version, they don't repent. And there's the harvest of bad weeds. But now there's this Luke 11 prophecy that says that the one, you know, that for the last seven years, five years at least, I've been promoting that, you know, you have to repent at the teachings of Solomon for the words to that effect. Now the bottom line is, is there was a lawyer called John Solomon from Solomon and Solomon and Company who made a person, uh, gave a corporation the legal status of person. And that happened in the 1890s. And again, I seem to be the only one in the world who talks about that. But it's black and white history, okay? Corporations have taken over the world. And, as I say in my literature, dead things rule the world, which is the fulfilling of a 1 Corinthians 15, okay? There it says there will be a man like Adam who will bring, and Adam is the man who brought the dead to life through human means. So this guy of our end times has to bring the dead to life through human means. And that's exactly what my act of supremacy challenge does. Do you remember, you know, 1859, you know, 1559? Well, my act of supremacy of 1559 says that we need to go from upholding God to upholding God's creation. And in this way, we become the caretakers of the universe. We grow up. We inherit the earth. It's the new covenant with God Almighty. My damage award redeems all debt in the world. And none of it is about me. Okay? Uh, you know, if anyone out there thinks I've ever lorded on them that, you know, anything... No, I haven't. Okay? Uh, I still maintain about a hundred views of per video and I don't think that's going to change until someone puts faith in the messenger and they are supposed to know by the beauty of the message. And the reality is, is if they can't see it, it's they're blind and I can't help it. Okay? It's, I am supposed to. Isaiah 43, I am supposed to not disturb a reed, yet as to Isaiah 2, I am supposed to move a mountain. And that all can be done by conquering with love, with general amnesty offered to the world. And that's what I'm pushing for. Bottom line is, the prophecy says, near our end times, we are supposed to know all the deep, dark secrets of what happened in behind closed doors. Well, that's done through the truth and reconciliation of an amnesty agreement. It has to happen. It's the ticket to the truth setting us free through human means and the exhilaration and the wonder of exposing a genuine prophet of our end times will cause the metanoia, the total about facing what we think, because that's what is being delivered. 
upholding God's creation really is the total about face of how we think. It changes everything exactly as the prophecy. Okay? God is everything spiritual and he created the creation which is everything of substance. By going from the oath of office which is to uphold God to upholding God's creation. We become the caretakers of the garden. We inherit the earth. Dead things get brought to life. Corporations, by their very nature, will start serving mankind. We have everything in place for the leisure state. My damage award, which is given to anyone in the English Empire's royal family who cares to take it is there for the taking. It's simply going back to true constitutional law. Going back to true constitutional law is the true solution to everyone's problems. GMOs and the poisoning of the food would become a crime. Pot would become legal. All sorts of things would become legal. We would be returning to civilized life and love would conquer all in the blink of an eye through the gentle spirit of 1 Corinthians 420.